Hi there. So one of the problems with the Dell GX620 small form factor system was that Dell didn't really design it very well. If you look right here, you can see that we have a single fan in the unit. Here's the CPU, and here's the hard drive unit, and here are the exhaust grills right back here. Now the problem is, is that when the super hot processor has air, you know, ex uh, from the exhaust system right here, that it is blocked by this big hard drive enclosure. So, um, so the the air does get warmed up, but then there's no way out of it for the system. So then we end up with this problem right here. If you look at those capacitors down there, you can see that they're bulged, and in one case right here, you can see that they've it's even burst, and now it's a uh, leaking electrolytic fluid. So. The main goal for this project was to figure out a way that we could get these uh, GX620s um, working uh, and it was actually going to take a design change, not just replacing the motherboards. I mean, obviously we did need to either replace the motherboards or the capacitors, um, but you know, the second issue is, is that we have to get the air out of the case. So, first step was um, we got to remove this and remove it permanently so that we can have a clear flow of air out through there. So my colleagues and I said to ourselves, uh, what's one thing that computers don't really need anymore, and that would be floppy drives. So we thought about how large a 2.5 inch hard drive is, and whether that would fit inside a floppy shell, and the location of it is perfect really, I mean once we get this uh, slim CD drive out of the way, and just looking at it right here, we said to ourselves, I mean a hard drive would go in here really easily. We've got our SATA cables and our power cable right here and that would leave the path open. So once we had that idea in mind it was a simple matter of getting started coring out the floppy disk drive and uh, getting it ready to put a hard drive into it. So once you get the floppy disk drive out of the case you're going to end up with this unit here which has uh, four screws that hold it in place, two on each side, these little ones right here. As you can see it's very easy to strip them out actually. So. That's step one there, but eventually you are going to get it apart, and because I am only one man, I just have a series of uh, different floppy drives here in various steps. Eventually you're going to be able to get it out, and you're going to end up with this unit. Now this is the actual floppy drive. You can go ahead and discard that cable there. You're never going to need it again. Once you get it out of its case, so here's where things start to get interesting. So you remove all of the uh, screws that you find, basically. Everything that you can possibly remove, you do it. So this top metal shield, go ahead, tear it off. Not going to need that. This one here, also going to want to remove this. Let's see if I can do it one-handed. Yep. And then the same thing on the bottom as well. You're going to want to remove that shielding too. I've already taken all the screws out. And then, basically, just start uh, pulling all these off and unscrewing everything you find. You're going to end up with a pile of stuff like this. There's a spindle and reader and various shielding and things like that. And here is basically the new bed where our little hard drive is going to be laying. Now, one thing that you're going to want to notice here between this one and the next one is the very conspicuous absence of these metal pieces up here. That's because what we're going to need to do is rip all of these out so that we can have room for the SATA hard drive's connectors. So, using your trusty pliers, you're going to want to make various breaks here, 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 and also right here. So once you have all those out, you're also going to want to break off this big thing right here and this thing next to it because those are going to want to come up and hit the hard drive in its circuit board and you definitely don't want that. So once you're done with that, you're going to end up with this. You can see that I tried to break those off as much as possible. Try to basically get it smooth, you know, you don't want to have anything sticking up. You might notice that I also took this bit of spring here that uh, controls the floppy drive door. You move it from facing frontwards, how it originally is, to facing sideways. That's going to do a better job of keeping the door shut, and uh, our users are going to think that it actually is still a floppy drive, which was the whole point of this project. The very last step is to take some duct tape or packing tape, just any sort of tape, basically, and lay a, a shield down here, because once again, we don't want the circuit board of the hard drive to be touching any metal. But yeah, once you get that, we've got our hard drive. It just sits right in here basically. Check this out. So our connectors, they have plenty of room here. And our power and data right here, they're going to be just fine. And if we look at the height, 
we can see that it's almost perfect really. Definitely enough room for that uh, optical drive to sit over the top of it. So yep, those are the various stages right there. Yeah. So here's a look at what our finished product is going to look like. Uh, here's one of the systems I've already done. I want to point out that uh, the three and a half inch floppy shell is still flush with the front of the system so anyone looking at that would just think it was still a regular floppy drive. Notice of course that now we have this nice big empty space for the hot air to get out of the system and our power and data cables here are actually pretty tight like if you listen here you know I want to point out that that uh, hard drive is not held in by any screws or anything inside that shell so we're just held in by the exact perfect fit that we have. So let's lift up this optical drive get it out of the way. And yeah, here's how it looks inside the shell. Um, the interesting thing is that uh, the power cable is basically exactly the right width that it just fits in there. Fits in there really nice. Yeah, we're, we're getting almost no movement at all. And when the CD-ROM drive is on top of it, you get no movement at all because this presses down on it so well. So, yep, that's how it looks inside the system. And um, I, think, I think it's really going to be a, a good thing for these uh, GX620s. I have uh, plenty more of them to go, so I'm going to be working for a while. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I hope that you found it informative, especially if you have a lot of these GX620s that um, have basically just been sitting there with blown-out capacitors or motherboards that you've replaced three or four times like our department did. Thanks for watching.